Welcome to this hands-on session on testing a U-shaped relationship in Stata. We don't have a primer for this session, and the reason is that testing for a U-shaped relationship is very similar to a moderation analysis. And we will see in a minute why this is the case. To begin with, let's open our Stata do file multivariate statistics. As before, I'm going to load the ice cream data into my memory. And before we start, let's take a step back and think about the argument that we're trying to test. Assume we have our ice cream consumption that is influenced by my income, but not in a linear way. It is not like more money leads to more ice cream consumption. Instead, I would expect a non-linear relationship. Specifically, when I have very low income, I may not have the financial means to consume ice cream, but as my income increases, so will my ice cream consumption. Up to a certain threshold, however, because if I earn a lot of money, the likelihood that I also have to work a lot for that money increases, leaving me less time to actually consume ice cream leading then to a downward slope at high values of income. In other words, I'm expecting an inverted U-shaped relationship between income and my ice cream consumption. To test this relationship, let's scroll further down in our script. After our moderation analysis, we have the section on testing U-shaped relationships. The first thing we need to do is install the package uTest, which we will use in a second to test for the presence of a U-shaped relationship. When implementing a U-shaped test, the idea is very similar to a moderation analysis, as I mentioned earlier. The only difference is that rather than having an independent variable and a moderator, you interact the variable of interest with itself. In our case, we create a multiplication between income with income, and that results in this squared term. So I can create this variable here. I call it income num squared and multiply income with income. An alternative specification would be using the abbreviation where you have an upward pointing um, hat and the two that would also result in the same variable. And then I label my variable. I give the name income squared to this new variable and can run my first regression. In this case, I have my dependent variable first followed by the direct effect of my explanatory variable, the income, and then the new squared term. So both are necessary for testing this inverted U-shaped relationship. And then my set of control variables like temperature, child, and the location. Running this command already gives me a first indication regarding the presence of a U-shaped relationship. So what I see here, if I look at the square term, is that it is statistically not significant. That gives me already a slight indication that probably I don't see that inverted U-shaped relationship. But this is only speculative so far because we need to, to run a few more tests. And a really helpful tool here is the U-test that we just installed. The syntax is very simple. We first um, have the command uTest followed by the independent variable income numerical and then the square term of that variable. Let's take a look at what that yields. So what I see now is the first thing it has as an output is the extreme point. So it is now 13,248. That is the income level at which the relationship, if it were present, that U-shaped relationship, would peak. That's the vertex of my curve. Then we have our null hypothesis, which is whether there is a monotone or inverse U-shaped relationship. So I'm testing against that null hypothesis. And what does my test statistic now tell me? Well, let's look at the p-value. Here we have a p-value of 0.242. In this case, the null hypothesis of either a monotone or inverse U-shaped relationship cannot be rejected. In short, there is probably no U-shaped relationship. So that is another confirmation of our prior understanding from the regression that we don't have a U-shaped relationship here. But to be absolutely sure, let's also plot the marginal effects of this U-shaped relationship. And that is done with the margins command, again, very similar to the multivariate um, moderation analysis that we tested and saw in our previous videos. 
I'm going to run a slightly different command now, which includes the fact of variables, income, hashtag, hashtag, income. And this, as we know from our previous video, tells data that I'm interacting income with itself. I also tell data that both these variables, which are the same, are continuous with the C dot in front. And what I see here in my regression output is that the result is exactly the same as before, but it now allows us to run the margins uh, as well and compute the margins at different values of income. In this case, I'm specifying the minimum and the maximum of income and go in steps of 20 euros. So from five to 25, et cetera, until I reach 20,000. I have to specify this twice because I have the independent and the moderating variable, which in this case are the same. You also notice that I added the quietly command in front of margins. I don't need it. It only suppresses the output so that I don't have an, a long running list of all the marginal values that I'm computing. These are quite a lot in this case. And the more and the smaller the intervals uh, you choose, the longer it will take data to compute the marginal effects. And the only thing that I'm left with is to plot the margins. And as you know, we can do this using the margins plot. That would be sufficient if I just added margin, margins plots. It gives me the result. For example, here I get now the margins plot for this variable, but it doesn't look very pretty at this point. So that's why I'm adding a few additional tweaks, uh, like labels to the variables and specifying the axes and the background and how the, inter, uh, the, the confidence intervals look so that we have an easier time interpreting these results. So what we see now is a clearer picture. We see our estimated marginal effects line, the black line, and around it in gray, the confidence intervals. And the first thing that probably strikes you is that the confidence intervals are very large and they, uh, that the line is also not a very strong U-shaped. That again confirms our prior notion that there is no not a very strong U-shaped relationship or none at all as our previous test, test statistics already indicated. So that again gives us um, the necessary um, confidence in rejecting that hypothesis that we have for certain no inverted U-shaped relationship and also the uh, U-shaped relationship is not statistically significant. I can also save this plot if I'm interested in it. I'm using here the TIFF format and a full HD resolution and I'm done testing my U-shaped relationship. As you see, the logic is very similar to a moderation, and I thank you for staying with me through this video, and see you in our next session.